Hello, I welcome you all in this course on power plant engineering. Today, we will discuss about the energy losses in steam turbines. As all of you know that no machine is 100 percent efficient, so is our Carnot cycle, uh, sorry this uh, Rankine cycle. Uh, if you draw the entire this uh, ideal Rankine cycle on temperature entropy diagram, it is going to be like this. This is 1, 2 processor 1, 2 where expansion in steam turbine takes place, then 2 to 3 condenser, then 3 to 4 pump and then boiler. So, we are confining our discussion to this part of the boiler, right, where <coughs> the losses takes place. In the steam turbine, there are two types of losses, uh, 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 internal losses and external losses. Losses means <laughs> the steam which is supplied here does not take part in power generation that we call losses in the steam turbine. So, steam is bypassing this process of producing power. So, this phenomena is called uh, the losses in the steam turbine. In the steam turbine, when the steam enters the turbine, there is a regulating wall, a regulating wall. It is very much integral part of a steam turbine, right. So, it controls the flow of steam inside the turbine. Since it is a wall, so and it has there is there has to be some pressure drop across the wall. So, the pressure drop is approximately 0 0.03 to 0 0.05 P 1, 3 to 5 percent of the inlet pressure, right. And what happens when this pressure drop take place? Suppose we draw the process on enthalpy entropy diagram. So, there is a constant pressure line P 1 and this is constant pressure line P 2, right. And <coughs> uh, there is a saturation line x is equal to 1, right. Now, expansion is taking place inside the turbine and the process is let us say it is 1 to 2. Now, throttling is taking place in throttling enthalpy remains constant and pressure is reduced. So, in the pressure regulating wall we will find a new pressure this is 1 dash right and when expansion from 1 dash takes place it is 1 dash to 2 dash. So, here you can clearly see that the entry at the entry of the turbine the process the output this delta h. So, delta h dash is less than delta h, delta h is 1 to 2. So, actually the we could have we were getting in ideal process we are getting work output from the process 1 to 2. Now, due to throttling the pressure at 1 has reduced to pressure 1 dash. Now, because this pressure is constant this is condenser pressure it is of the order of let us say 8 to 10 kilo Pascal or 15 kilo Pascal not more than that. So, this pressure is constant. So, we can see that change in enthalpy is less in this case. So, this is a loss right and this loss is due to pressure regulating wall. So, the pressure drop obviously, the pressure drop in the pressure regulating wall has to be minimized, but normally it remains in the order of 0 0.03 to 0 0.04 or 3 to 5 percent of inlet pressure. Now, after entering the turbine, steam enters the nozzle and nozzle does not have any moving part. It, it is a passage through which steam through which the steam passes. It, it can be a converted divergent nozzle or a convergent nozzle and velocity of steam is increased, right. But if there is a friction in the nozzle, when there is a friction in the nozzle, the exit velocity will reduce exit velocity from the nozzle reduce right. There is a friction resistance in the wall which will increase the ideally it should be uh, isentropic process the expansion in the nozzle, but due to friction in the wall it is no longer isentropic process right. Heat generation is there. There is a viscous friction between particles also and we assume steam to be an ideal fluid when, when we consider it while passing through a nozzle, but it is not an ideal fuel. So, viscous friction between particle is there. 
boundary layer growth is there inside the nodule. There are so many phenomena, and these all these phenomena they lead to uh, loss in the uh, nozzle. So, if there is a theoretical velocity at outlet and there is an uh, actual velocity at outlet, then we can say this is the loss in kinetic energy. Right. And this loss in kinetic energy is directly reflected in the output of the turbine and if you divide this by 1000, we will get loss in kinetic energy in kilowatts. Right? There is a uh, term which is known as velocity coefficient, which is depicted by k. So, k is equal to actual velocity divided by theoretical velocity. So, here we can always modify the loss in nozzles as uh, theoretical square 1 minus k square divided by 1000, right. Now, this k, it depends all these factor, factors which I have already explained to you. The value of k depends on these factors. If there is a rough nozzle, I mean the rough or it is a casted nozzle, the value of k will be <coughs> in a range of 0 0.93 to 0 0.94. Now, if we smoothen the surface, right? suppose it is further machine after casting the nozzle is further machine, then it is 0 0.95 to 0 0.96. And it is surface, if we keep on improving the surface, it can go to up to 0 0.96 to 0 0.97. Very high surface finish in overall, we can have the value of k up to 0 0.97 and definitely higher value of k will lead to uh, in mitigation of the losses in the steam nozzles. Right? Now, after leaving the steam nozzles, the steam enters to turbine, turbine blades and <coughs> in turbine blades, suppose the, there is an impulse turbine. So, there is a grid of blades, there are number of blades. Right? and there is a gap between the blades and the nozzle and they are nozzles which are fixed uh, throughout the periphery of the uh, diaphragm. Now, when steam is coming from these nozzles, it is coming to this space, space between the nozzle and the turbine blade. Right? Here mixing of steam takes place, this causes E d in this, in this part of the turbine. And due to this E D is there is a loss, right. Second thing is when this high speed because the velocity of steam is quite high in, in, in a steam turbine. So, with the high velocity steam when it strikes the blade edge, blade edge the dimension of the blade edge you can take as I mean 0 0.001 inches, it is quite thin, but still. When the impingement of this high velocity steam takes place, this also causes losses. So, in fact, a wake is created, a wake is created when there is a flow in the steam and due to this wake, uh, the losses takes place. So, these wake losses are ref also reflected in the efficiency of uh, steam turbine or efficiency of the process. Now, this leading edge when the steam meets the leading edge, here also there are two types of losses, one is due to wake, second is uh, due to mixing or turbulence created here, third one is impingement of steam on the leading edge of the blade. When impingement of the steam on the leading edge of the uh, <coughs> blade takes place as I explained earlier, there is a uh, loss, there is a loss of energy. Now, there is a leakage also, there are at several places there is a leakage of steam. So, there is a leakage of steam. For example, if we take uh, 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 impulse turbine, so suppose the steam is coming from here, this is a nozzle exit and there is a blade on this side, right. So, this is nozzle. and this is the axis of the turbine. Right? Now, when steam is coming from this side, 
from the it is coming out of the nozzle and it is entering the blade right the steam will also try to leave from here there is a shrouding this is a shrouded place there is a shrouding here and steam because a clearance has to be provided between the moving blade and the casing i mean there has to be some otherwise the blade will not move at all so the clearance has to be provided and steam tries to bypass through this clearance now how to stop it now in order to stop it one solution is we increase the height of the blade a little height of the blade when a little height of the blade is increased it more steam I, I cannot say 100% but more quantity of steam will enter the blade because there are two passages suppose there are two passages like this one is like this another is like this fluid is coming from this side right so part of the fluid will enter here and part of the fluid may like to leave from here but if we increase the width of this passage there is a possibility most of the fluid will move in this direction so blade height is increased but in that case what happens there is a reverse flow of steam there is a reverse flow of steam in this direction right in that case uh, due to this may be due to the uh, uh, because the, the labyrinth seal is provided here a labyrinth seal is provided here and due to this there is a reverse flow of steam in this passage and this causes again the loss of work so so the loss of work so the loss of work through leakage in a steam turbine is difficult to avoid i mean we can minimize it but we cannot completely avoid it now second thing is when steam moves over the blades right it fills the entire passage so this friction of the blades when there is a blade suppose blades are fixed on the mounted on the turbine and when the steam is moving over these blades there is a disc friction i mean the friction between the between the moving disc and the moving fluid and this also causes losses in the movement of steam turbine <laughs> uh, another thing is when steam strike the blades in a, in a, in a, any whether it is impulse turbine or reaction turbine it there is a change in direction of the steam there is a change in inertia there is a change in direction when there is a change in direction due to this also uh, the, there are losses due to friction over the surface secondly the angle of turn if you look at the angle of turn is equal to blade angle I'm sorry no, not alpha beta blade angle at inlet plus blade angle at outlet that is the angle of turn right and higher the angle of turn more are the losses okay <coughs> there are losses due to shrouding also in as as i explained earlier uh, now we'll focus on the disc friction losses now for the disc friction losses there is a empirical formula power disc friction is equal to m delta h disc friction is equal to c d square u by 1000 cube rho kilowatt this is empirical formula empirical formula are derived by conducting number of experiments on the prototypes and such type of formula are generated to facilitate the design engineers so this friction in terms of power in any turbine can be found out using this formula where <coughs> there is another log c by 0.735 and mu is equal to 0.73t plus 40.68 into 10 to power minus 7 kg per meter second or we can say pascal second any of the unit you can use now mu we will get from here c we will get from here and ultimately we will get the power now d is the diameter of the mean diameter of the rotor p is pressure u is the peripheral velocity u is equal to pi d n by 60 now through this formula we can quantify because what happens we understand the losses are taking place 
but if we can quantify the losses we can classify the losses and if we can quantify the losses then we can take the measures how to mitigate these losses in a steam turbine right losses suppose steam loss in a steam turbine is a loss of power right so if we minimize the losses definitely we can increase the output of the turbine or we can produce a uh, more efficient uh, steam turbine there is another um, empirical relation for power loss loss this friction is equal to m again delta h loss this friction is equal to lambda partial this is per partial admission of steam 1 minus 0 0.07 d square 0 0.61 z 1 minus epsilon l 1.5 d u by 1000 u by 100 sorry not 1000 u by 100 cube and rho this is another this is also an empirical formula in this empirical formula the length of the blade is also taken into the account in previous formula in this formula also there is a d this is a mean diameter l is the length of the blade length of the blade suppose there is a drum shaft this is a solid shaft blades are mounted on the shaft so this height of the blade is l here and clearance of the blade with the casing is epsilon. So, this clearance is also taken into the account and height of the blade is also taken into the account in this <laughs> formula. Now, we will talk more about the clearance losses. Now, what we do we provide labyrinths, packings are provided, packings are provided to prevent the leakage of steam, but packing we cannot provide in a moving part. A static parts is okay when, when there is no movement we can provide the packing but for a moving part for a moving part packing cannot be provided so what we what is done on the surface suppose this is surface of casing and this is turbine blade end right so in this b here the constrictions are provided like this. Now, this is a restriction in the flow of steam, but a steam flow we cannot completely restrict because we have to provide this surface as a free surface. We cannot extend them up to the surface, otherwise the purpose will be lost. So, some clearance is reduced, but it is made sure that the constriction, the material of this constriction is a very soft material. So, what happens by accident, suppose this, ex this blade comes into the contact with the constriction, it will be rubbed off damage will not be done to the blade. Now, in this constriction throttling takes place. Now, let us take uh, this is the pressure, this is P 1 right. So, in one constriction what will happen when the steam will flow, steam will flow in this direction. So, this is act this part I will magnify this, this part will act as a throttling device. Now, after throttling the steam will come into this cavity right, when the throttling is taking place let us say this is 1. So, 1 and after throttling it comes to the stage 2. Now, when it comes to the stage 2 here because steam cannot move further in this direction. So, here again the kinetic energy which is gained here is converted into the uh, uh, pressure energy. So, in this process it goes up like this somewhere here right. Then again next restriction in this restriction again the expansion takes place or this is pressure is reducing this is H this is H s not pressure this is not pressure this is head, uh, enthalpy. So, again the expansion is taking place. Now, pressure has reduced here pressure was P 1 now pressure has become P 2 right. Next one 3. Now, with again the throttling of this uh, uh, high pressure steam will take place. So, at P 2 2 it will come to pressure 3 pressure is reduced. Now, at this pressure again this velocity 
I mean, this mixing off will take place, and because there is no passage to move, then again we will the enthalpy will be regained. So, we will uh, attain the this state, let us say this is uh, 3 dash, right. And this process will continue, and we will get finally we will get pressure P1. Suppose number of constriction, number of constrictions are z, space between the constriction will be z minus 1, it is obvious. Suppose there are 10 constrictions, then the space between the constrictions will be 10 minus 1, 9. So, this is another method of uh, 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 pre preventing the leakage of steam from between the moving part and the static part. This is because this is the most intelligent, I mean, this is the most typical part in a steam turbine when the rotor is moving, and in that case, we have to minimize the steam, uh, the loss of steam to the surroundings. Now, we will take a case when steam is passing through a restriction, we will just we have to quantify it for the design purpose. So, the velocity c is equal to under root we know that to p dash minus p double dash multiplied by v, v is the specific volume or we can simply we can take divide by rho because 1 by rho is equal to v. So, the velocity after passing one constriction, the velocity gain is going to be this. Mass of the leak is going to be A g c divided by v, right. Now, A g is area through which it is passing, it is pi d and gap between the casing and the blade, this is epsilon, right c is the velocity, v is the specific volume. So, it is going to be equal to a g 2 p dash minus p double dash divided by v, right. We have simply put the value of uh, this is m leakage is equal to a g c by v, we are getting this expression. Now, as we know that p v is equal to constant p v is equal to b or p is equal to b by v, it is considered to be a constant temperature process. So, b by v and this will give us p dash minus p double dash multiplied by p is equal to b by 2 m leak divided by 2 a g whole square. It is simple algebraic manipulation nothing else. <coughs> From here we can get uh, this is p minus p dash minus p double dash. It is negative of pressure drop. So, we can say delta p uh, multiplied by p let us divide it by delta x. This is the distance delta x right and it is going to be equal to half m leak divided by a g whole square 1 by delta x and we can say because this is constant mass leak is constant this is constant. So, we can always say it is a by delta x I am writing it again delta p by delta x multiplied by p is equal to a delta x dx is equal to minus dp by dx multiplied by p. Now, if you further manipulate this, we will get minus p d p sorry minus p d p is equal to a d x divided by delta x or p 1 square minus p 2 square is equal to 2 a x 1 minus x 2 divided by delta x right. Now, if you further do the manipulations we will get m leak as under root p 1 square minus p 2 square divided by z c p 1 v 1. Now, why we are talking z c? This is the number of restrictions as I said earlier. Now, this is a g is equal to c c pi d epsilon. Now, c c is constriction coefficient because when there is a 
restriction and the and the steam is flowing through this restriction there is a coefficient which has to be multiplied by th which which should multiply the theoretical velocity output so that we can get the actual uh, velocity output right so this coefficient has to be used in order to find the value of the ag because if you have if you know the vena contractor suppose the fluid is passing through a restriction fluid will not move like this there will be neck formation here and which will reduce the cross section area right so this reduction in cross section area is taken into the account by cc now this is for the velocity when the velocity is uh, subsonic now suppose the velocity is supersonic right or the velocity is greater than or equal to there is a convergent divergent nozzle so when there is a convergent divergent nozzle there is a equation for convergent divergent mass flow rate through a convergent divergent nozzle that is 2.03 ag under root px by vx or we can write 2.03 ag under root px square divided by p 1 v 1 because p x v x then it is going to be p 1 v 1 ok. So, this p x and v x this is the last chamber their number of constriction we are talking about the last chamber because after the last chamber there is atmospheric air. So, this these details we are talking about the last chamber because here the velocity will also be high and and we can consider here the case of convergent divergent nozzle. So, m leak here is going to be p 1 square minus p x square divided by z c minus 1 p 1 v 1. Why we are saying z c minus because there is z number of constriction then the gap between the constriction is going to be z c minus 1 right and from here we can get the value of p x square as p 1 square divided by 2.03 square z c minus 1 plus 1 or m leak is going to be 2.03 a g under root p 1 square divided by 2.03 whole square z c minus 1 plus 1 p 1 v 1 or we can say m leak is equal to p 1 z c plus 1 1.5 v 1. Now, in 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 a, in a convergent divergent nozzle there is a term which is known as critical pressure right and critical pressure is always 0 0.55 p 1. It means if upstream pressure is 10 bar the critical pressure is going to be 5 bar on downstream. stream. Now, suppose there is a nozzle which has upstream pressure of 10 bar and downstream pressure is 1 bar right. So, it is going to be a uh, convergent divergent nozzle because the critical pressure we are getting here is 5.5 bar same is the case here. So, right and we are considering here this is for superheated stream. this is for superheated stream. So, critical pressure is equal to 0 0.55 p 1 under root 1 by 2.03 square divided by z c minus 1 plus 1.2.03 whole square is equal to 0 0.85 p 1 by z c plus 1 under root now this is p 1. So, if we know the value of p 1, if we know the value of z c number of constriction we can easily find the critical pressure. Uh, now, once the critical pressure is known we can find the leakage through the uh, the type of leakage I mean which part of the uh, labyrinth is having subsonic considered to be subsonic and which part of the packing has to be considered as supersonic. <laughs> now, there is one special case uh, I would like to discuss here that is leakage in impulse reaction turbine. Now, in impulse reaction turbine uh, as you know there are fixed blade and the moving blades. 
So, fixed blades are fixed on the housing, this is a shaft. So, fixed blades are, it is not up to here, it is up to here only. Fixed blades are, uh, are, are, are arranged in the housing and the moving blades are in, are mounted on the rotor. So, here in this case what happens if we, I, I magnify this, it is going to be something like this. Right. And the, the leakage will not only take pro place from the, the, the between the casing and the blades, it will also take place from the fixed blade and the shaft between these place also. So, we can provide the shrouding here, uh, constrictions here and here as well. Uh, this is a special case of uh, uh, impulse reaction turbine, there are external losses also. Uh, external losses are less, I mean if we look at the turbine external losses. Uh, this is uh, mechanical losses, movement of the bearing, so losses in the bearing and losses in the moving parts. So, they are mechanical process and leakage of steam. If there is any joint or some, some uh, I mean opening is there from where the steam is leaking, so that leakage is also considered as the external loss in the turbine. But it is definitely true if we can quantify, anyhow we can quantify, though it is difficult, but anyhow if we can quantify these losses, then we can plan the minimizing minimization of these losses and improving the efficiency of a steam turbine. That is all for today. Thank you very much. Thank you.